What's up, guys, and welcome to a very special episode of Headphones Nail Reviews. And in this case, it's going to be a follow-up review of a review I did a few months ago regarding installing Linux in 2021. So back around May or June of this year, I did a review where I installed Kaboon 2 version 21.04 on a approximately 7 to 10 year old laptop and how in general it was a pretty good um, alternative to Windows. Not having used a Mac desktop or a laptop in a number of years, it's hard to do that comparison. So. Um, Overall, this review is going to cover um, re having recently installed Kaboon 2 version 21.10, but also a quick overview of a couple of other distributions that I tried in the meantime, just to compare the installation process and general benefits of why I think Kaboon 2 is a good alternative to Windows. So to start it off, some of the other distributions that I've tried in the past few months include Manjaro Linux, uh, System 76's Pop OS and Linux Mint. Of all of the distributions, I want to say that the two that are comparable as far as ease of installation are Linux Mint and Kubuntu. Um, System 76's Pop OS is actually one of the ones that is probably more visually appealing as far as installation and performance, just because it has a few extra. Um, updates as far as visual processing as far as animations and transitions and things like that but i think that's partially just because they remove some of the um, back end stuff in ubuntu make it more performance friendly and stuff like that but it leans heavily towards the ubuntu ui using gnome which has not really been one of my favorite um uis on the linux side so overall for me that UI is fine and the, that distribution is okay as if you like the GNOME UI, but for me, I generally don't like it. And for me, as you veer away from what Ubuntu and Kubuntu provide and try to simplify or enhance things, it kind of veers away from what makes those two distributions good. Um, Linux Mint is actually a good alternative to those just because it kind of simplifies what you have in Kubuntu as far as like the theming system, some of the installation processes and things like that to make it kind of a version of the Linux version of Windows Lite where you kind of, where you remove the theming system in favor of um, colored accents. So if you don't like the default, you can switch it to a lime green or aqua blue or hot pink, things like that. So it has a simplified version of that rather than a full UI transformation. And then Manjaro was good as well. It's kind of comparable to what Linux Mint provides, but it's kind of a little bit more like in between Kubuntu and Linux Mint. But Arch installations are always have always been a kind of weird thing for me. So it's not one I want to recommend just because I have trouble with it, but that doesn't make it a bad distribution. So for me, I went back to um, a Kubuntu 21.10. Um, so for me, it's the best of the distributions just because the installer, when you're first setting up your system, matches the Windows installation probably the best as far as maybe up to Windows 7. Um, I don't want to say it mimics Windows 8.1 just because I've never installed Windows 8 um, and it's, it differs from Windows 10 and 11 just because it doesn't have that final step of Windows getting your system ready for setup which I find a nuisance just because once the system is installed and you do a reboot you should be able to jump right into your system so I think Linux handles that well especially Kubuntu because once you set your keyboard layout and language, enter your Wi-Fi um, network credentials, it handles everything from there. The installation is fast and rapid, even on an older machine, because of a two-fold process of having an SSD and installing from a flash drive. So that's really quick. But once the installation is done, it basically says, OK, you reboot when you're ready. It'll ask you to remove your installation medium and it'll reboot and you're ready to go you can sign in and start using your system whereas even with and i even did install windows 10 and my issue there is that it didn't find all the drivers for my computer notably the um 
SD card reader and the USB hub, which was kind of weird, whereas Linux was able to find it using whatever generic drivers they have. So I'm not sure what that was all about. And then even installing the older versions of the drivers that um, my manufacturer had set that up. But then it's one of those things where no one really wants to go to find drivers that are available, see what versions there are, look for an older version, see if those work or hope they work. And in my case, um, and basically yeah, that's about it. So that's one of those things that was really annoying. So for me, and then also messing with things like um, UEFI um, security was weird. So for me, going back to Kubuntu made the most sense and is the most stable of the install installation that, on, that I have on my distribution. So for me, that's the start of it. So installation was super simple and easy and straightforward. Um, their software center is also really easy to use as far as installing apps um, like Audacity and GIMP and things like that. You still do have to install um, Chrome manually, but um, they make it simple in that you can download the file, you can click on it and start the installation process. You do have to install, um, enter your administrative password to continue the installation. But once you do that, it takes care of that on all on the um, all on its own, much like installing an app on Windows. And then once you launch Chrome, you can it'll ask you if you want to sync your set your Google settings so you can um, get that going. And from there, you're all set with Chrome. If you want to use Firefox, it does come pre-installed out of the box, so you don't have to do anything extra or special there. So that's also a that's a definite plus um, as far as that goes, especially if you're not a fan of the Edge browser or Internet Explorer or anything like that. And then from there, the thing that I like the most is not having a lot of pre-installed stuff. So when I was testing a fresh installation of um, Windows, I did have to skip the OneDrive um, credential installation. And then it has like the Xbox stuff and a number of other software packages pre-installed that I generally don't use like um, 3D Paint, although I do use GIMP. So it's one of those kinds of things and then um a couple of other side packages related to gaming and then i couldn't uninstall quite uninstall you know the office shortcuts so overall it was one of those things where if i don't have to uninstall anything that is the best um installer available and especially on a fresh installation of any operating system if i don't have to uninstall anything that's the best um, system and cleanest system in the world. I don't like to restore a system and then have to uninstall, you know, pre-installed games and things I'm not going to use and things that I didn't want to begin with. So that's where Kubuntu really shines. Um, if you do need a local, and then from there, like if you do want a local mail program, you can use the um, default. I think now I'm drawing a blank offhand if I install Thunderbird manually or not, but. Thunderbird is a good local um, mail client as far as um, syncing to most popular email servers. So you can add your Gmail account if you want or Hotmail or Yahoo Mail or anything like that. Um, so that's the basics of it. Um, and then the UI for me generally looks like Windows. So if you're giving the laptop to somebody who doesn't really particularly care, but they do want things like themes and more of a slightly modern looking UI than Kubuntu is a way to go. I do give Linux Mint a second place just because if you don't care about themes or want a simple low overhead operating system on the Linux side, then Linux Mint is a good alternative. Um, most of the same software sources are available on both platforms, so you can easily install Chrome and Thunderbird. Firefox does come pre-installed. LibreOffice is on both um, uh, systems, so you, can, you have a word processor, spreadsheet program, and things like that. Um, so that's the um, basis of getting things installed and um, running. If you are a gamer, then it does. They both do support Steam, especially. Even, so going back to the Kubuntu side, if you go to Discover, which is the Linux inst or the Kubuntu software installing uh, software installation center, the, um, if you search for Steam, you get you can set up the installer. Then it'll do its 
also, and then when you launch it, it'll do its own system or software updates and set up the back end for you. And then it'll direct you to the login screen or create a new account. And then if you do have an account already, you can log in and set yourself up from there. The one thing I recommend doing from there is um, setting up the Proton support and background Vulkan sh shader support. So if you are running, trying to run games that are meant for Windows, then by setting those two things up, then the compatibility layer will be ready for to go for you when you do install the games that you want to use. So for me, that and that's important for me to install Star Wars Old Republic. But if there are other games that you want that that you want to play on Linux that are um, general or historically Windows only games, then setting those two things up should be the easiest way for you to get yourself up and running. Um, and then the coolest feature I found in Kubuntu is the global themes manager, which I think in my original review was giving me some a little bit of trouble um, as far as uninstalling themes and then changing themes and not thinking that they were um, getting configured properly. So the one tip I give there is that you can, or the cool thing to start it off with is that you can install a lot of themes to make it look like you how you want. So whether you want Windows 7 or XP, 10 or 11 style look, a uh, Mac look or a kind of futuristic look, there's a lot of themes that are available to help you customize your desktop. But the cool thing beyond that is that you can mix and match your themes. So in the screenshots that for this episode, you'll see that I do have a Mac global theme or a Mac Mojave theme, but I have the Windows icon set and cursor. So because I like the Windows icon set and cursor set over the Mac one. So um, you can mix and match things like that. Um, uninstalling a global theme is pretty simple. So once you switch to the theme that you want, you can um, search for that global theme in the search area and uninstall it. But not all independent uh, or not all of the subcategories get uninstalled so if you install so if there's an icon pack associated it may not uninstall so you do need to go in and um, search for those in those individual search areas for those items like in your icon pack installation and um, search for that item and then install it it did give me an error if I try to delete it like I do like I tried it if I was deleting a wallpaper which is kind of weird so um, that's a little bit of a tip there. So if you want to do a little bit of cleanup, then going into search for the icon pack you want to uninstall will um, offer the um, uninstall button and it'll get uninstall it fine that way. Um, and the last tip is that when you are getting ready to apply a new theme. Once you're done, make sure you reboot your system so that the changes come into effect. Um, this is not necessarily consistent across all themes, but it makes sure that the changes go into effect, your lock screen gets changed properly and all of that, and any and basically the look you want sticks. Um, You'll, you will find that the start yeah, that your login screen is in a different area than your the global theme. So if you do want to set a separate uh, login screen than your theme, you can do that, which is pretty cool. Um, but you can and then you can also even change the def default image in most of those um, or many of those um, login screens if you want. But if you want to make sure that your login screen matches your theme, just switch over to your startup and shutdown area and set up that um set up your uh, login screen so also if, when you make that change by rebooting your system your um changes will come into effect so that's really all there is for this particular review so for me if you're looking to switch away from the mac and or the apple and windows operating system environments or you have an older system that you want to breathe new life into and you want to use just as a general purpose um, environment if you don't necessarily play games or if you want to play some older games that uh, may not require the latest hardware then I recommend using Kubuntu in order to um, breathe new life into this system so that your um, you can use your laptop for uh, most things like word processing, email, um, 
uh, chatting and things like that. The only issue that I had is that if you do have an older um, system that where your webcam software is not installed, you would have to go through a roundabout process of installing software like DroidCam to use your um, smartphone to use a webcam or, or buy a separate USB webcam and set that up. But other than that, um, from for like built-in hardware that doesn't actually work anymore, if your hardware works for the most part, you should be able to, um, or Linux should be able to handle the installation without having to deal with um, drivers and things like that um, after installation. Um, I did read though, like there are there are um, some distributions that offer uh, NVIDIA specific installers, so that you can that have the um, NVIDIA drivers built in. So that's the other thing is that if you know that you have an NVIDIA video card, then you may have to install that uh, the software for the, your video card separately. So just as a side thing to make sure that when you are um, setting up your system and if you know that you have an NVIDIA um, video card to search for those drivers so your visual um, aesthetics of the uh, laptop are as supported as possible. So that's really all there is for this particular review. So to sum it all up, my recommended Linux distribution is Kubuntu just because of the ease of installation, graphical or visual aesthetics to make an easy merge from Windows to Linux. Um, as far as Mac goes, you can install software like Latte Doc, L-A-T-T-E-D-O-C-K. So you can move your taskbar on Linux to the top of your screen and install Latte Doc to have a dock for your apps at the bottom to mimic the uh, Mac UI on your Linux machine and offer a more low um, low overhead version of Macs on an older system, especially if you do have, if you're coming from a laptop that had Windows installed, but you prefer the stability of Linux, then um, Latte Dock is the way to go. As far as a close runner up, I give it to Linux Mint just because it's a more basic version of Kubuntu. It strips out some of the extra theming options and overhead that Kubuntu offers, but it's still full featured and pulls its software repository to match what's in Kubuntu so you're not too far off in um, compatibility and apps offered. Um, I give Pop! OS and Manjaro and all any other ones like Elementary OS and things like that runners up just because they're good distributions and they offer various visual styles, but because there are, a lot of them are variations of what Ubuntu offers, it's, it's one of those things where it all depends on what you prefer is or what is your preferred visual um, preference and what you're going to use your laptop for and ultimately how old your laptop is to begin with for getting those um, distributions set up. So I get so to simplify it, the older your laptop is, I, the um, Linux Mint is probably the best way to go, but if you're not too worried or your laptop's not too old, like within the past like five to seven years, then Kubuntu is definitely the way the way to go. And even on newer systems, if you want something more uh, modern, like Pop OS is good as for the visual style, but it's more for gamers. Um, but Kubuntu offers that balance of what all the different distributions offer and still gives you that Windows familiarity. So if you're giving to someone who doesn't care but is familiar with the Windows UI, then Kubuntu is the way to go. So that's all there is for this particular review. So if you have any questions, comments, feedback, what your favorite distribution is or what you're using, then you can find me on Twitter at PatelN01. The website is headphonesneal.reviews for past episodes, subscription links, supporting the show, and all of that good stuff. But thanks for tuning into this particular episode, and until next time.